Uh, this is our deep water, we call it the uh, deep deep water bugger. Bugger. Because it has palmering on it for no other reason. Okay. Flat wax nylon. We're basically just going, just going to take a, um, a bed of thread down to just above. We can see just above where the hook point ends. There. And the next part I'm going to build up now is just the uh, the section of the fly with the using the marabou. Now the marabou is going to give it quite a bit of life, as we can see here. The thing with the marabou too is when you actually lay your marabou, try and get little bits of variation in the in the length of your marabou. So approximately working out about a third of the length from the back back of, of the floor and I'm going to put a couple of layers there's a reason for that I'll put that uh, first layer down and I've only put a couple of wraps a couple of wraps over it to start with get a bit more serious with it there now but before I go any further one thing I want to do um, I find flies with the marabou in them uh, have a tendency to tail wrap and particularly once they're wet that marabou has a tendency during the cast or even sometimes during the strip I'm going to come around underneath the back of it come down deep under the back pull it up tight do one two wraps back to the start again I'm going to go under a second time down nice and deep and come back and just so under that first layer of the marabou now We've basically got two wraps of thread under there and for no other reason to try and elevate that that bottom section of the marabou up. Now I just want to fatten it up a little bit. When I say fatten it, I'm not actually using a heck of a lot of material. Sometimes you look at flies tied with the marabou and you find that the back end of the actual fly um, is quite full. And you can see just my, <coughs> as I'm talking there, the air from my breathing is enough to waft that material. So it, it, it's fairly fine. I'm just going to drop in there now two strands, which I'll end up for because I'll double them over. I have a sparkle flash. I'll double that over, it'll end up four. Once again, stagger your, stagger your ends of your material just a touch all over the place because at the end of the day, like most things, you don't want them square back. Not too many things in nature are really just straight square back. Tie that in with a couple of wraps. Okay. Once again, make sure I've got that staggered well. These other wraps here will now... I'll just take the tips off those there and they'll be shorter sections and I'll just hold that down and around the actual bottom section of the marabou so I've got a bit of coverage like so and don't be shy just to do one more deep wrap around the back once again to keep keep that up there. So if we looked at that from the top now We've pretty well got our marabou under the bottom. Most of our sparkle flash generally conceal within the centre, a little bit out the sides. If you liked, you could put in um, a different colour, and I've done that with quite a few of the marabou. Actually put a darker centre in. So I'll put the brown down, the darker, then the sparkle flash, the uh, black again and then the brown over the top. Um, certainly red. Red has been a, once again, stagger your ends of your marabou. Okay, you're not... Okay, here we go again. Yeah. So, we've tied in the... Um, we've, we've tied in the marabou, we've put the bit of flash in, and now I just want to put a bit of cross-cut zonka. And why, why the cross-cut zonka, as opposed to the straight zonka? 
there's, there's two arguments here, I suppose. Straight Zonka will stand up more and will tend to lay back and stand up and lay back. The cross-cut Zonka will tend to lay back and stay back. But in doing that, it'll provide some protection against that tail wrapping. Uh, we don't need a lot of it. I'm just going to give it one more, make sure I've got a nice, even coverage. Take the bodkin. Create a cap. Comes through our okay. cap. And then two wraps to the front. Back to the back. Two wraps to the front. Back to the back. Nice and firm now. And two wraps to the front. So we should be able to trim off without hopefully cutting the thread. We get our idea now that um, that will lay back. So if I take that out and hold it to the vise, it's actually laying back with the hook point sitting through and it tends to help resist that tail wrapping that, that I was referring to. Okay. At this point in time we can go ahead now and tie in the eye. Um, purposely for the looking for a slow move, I'm going to tie the eye back, leave about three sixteenths from the um, eye of the hook and the reason I'm leaving that bit of space at the front is there for no other reason but if I want to put a weed guard in there later on, I can. Okay. Go over twice, do my first run around. Now I'll go over and under and over and under and over and under. Now take that nice and firm now. It's starting to firm up. So figure eight again. Three, two, three. Around, lock in, over and under and over and under and over and, under and wrap around. And this time, we should be nice and firm, in which we are. Rock and roll. Um, the saddle, grizzly saddle that I have here. We're going to palmer that through later, so I will tie it in now, in preparation for that. Put him there, get him out of the way. This one caught my eye today, it's called root beer. Chenille. I think they catch more fly fishes than they do fish, but it looked pretty. So the idea now with the chenille is I'm going to do a wrap forward and I'll stop just behind the eye because I do want to put a collar in there um, as we go. I'll just... Uh, Wrap my chenille body in. Just leaving that little bit of a gap that I mentioned earlier. Behind. A little bit of a gap behind there to put the collar in. The collar is actually quite predominant in uh, the fly, whereas the collar itself will tend to... I'm just going to palmer in now that, that hackle. Okay. 
Well-looking apple. Yeah, well-looking haggle. I'll just tie that off now. They're not a fine fly, they're off of the better, really. No. No, there's certainly finesse is not the, not the name of the game. Okay. Uh, that's what the little animal's starting to look like now. He's taking shape. The last thing I need to tie in there now is simply the um, is simply the collar. Um, in the gusto fly, they tend to use the red as a collar. Um, most I mean, of the it would catch fish like that even. But it's not very strong looking. It's, it's not very strong looking, that. I mean, you can catch fish with that. Yeah, as, it is that. as it is. But, yeah, I suppose it's... Um, I'm just trying to stick to a little bit of tradition, I suppose, yeah, yeah. if nothing else, being superstitious. I'll take that forward. I just want to wind that collar on nice and solid. The main thing is, if we're going to get away with it, I'm going to come over. I've done one wrap over the front. I'll go, come around, I might have to trim away from the eyes, but I've got a nice strong collar there. Come around underneath. So you've got really mousy eyes, this fella. Tiny eyes. Very small. Is it like which colour the collar is? No. Well, in the gusto they they put the, a red there, and I, I I just don't know whether it's that um, the whole thing with uh, the gill the gill line. Um, and you see his little eyes there now. It, so it's, it's, it's actually out. it's actually started to form up ahead. So now we'll just use our um, good finishing tool <coughs> and uh, finish that little fella off. I always like to give it a second round for the whip finisher to be sure to be sure. <laughs> And there you have it.